All right, so welcome back to another conversation with Stick to the Plan Productions. I'm Mike Lane, joined with Dr. Jeremy Vincent, where we're going to discuss the epilogue to the Mayweather versus McGregor fight. So, Dr. Vincent, what's your thoughts on the fight overall? You know, at the end of the day, yeah, it wasn't too big of a surprise to see the difference in the skill. Kind of going with the specificity, actually, let's start off with not even the fight itself, let's start off with the weigh-in. For the fact that, you know, you're right, after really looking at how both Floyd and McGregor looked at the weigh-ins compared to how they looked in the fight, Floyd looked essentially the same, McGregor looked markedly larger, markedly larger. And the thing that at least I keep in mind when it comes to the basics of physiology is the fact that when you go through those types of massive weight cuts, it's the issue is not so much you lose the water and you gain the water. The thing that people forget is it's when you drink that water, that water is not back in your muscles, it's not back in your joints, it's not back in your cells, it's in your digestive system, then it's in your blood then it slowly gets pulled back into those cells. And one of the other things that people do in order to modify weight is to do what's known as glycogen depletion. So they purposely cut back carbohydrate intake so that they can essentially cause their muscles to retain less water because it's about for every one gram of carbohydrate that you store in the muscles via glycogen, you got to store about 2.4 odd grams of water, uh, give or take a little bit there. So Decarbing's great because you can make weight. The problem is, well, then you don't have that energy system to fall upon. And I think that is kind of the issue. Even with a 24-hour weigh-in, you're not going to be able to optimize those glycogen stores, much less have essentially your fluids being retained back to the way where they were previously. Not to mention, Floyd didn't look like he had to cut water weight at all. Looks like he just stepped on the scale. It's like, all right, here I am. Let's do this dance. And then after, I mean, obviously, look at McGregor. The second after he weighs in, he's essentially immediately opening a bottle of something and drinking it. So, if if he could have act, if he could have not done that while he's on the stage, I think that's a pretty good indicator that he wasn't having to work that hard to be down there. And I know we talked about people that then use intravenous rehydration, you know, like people do when they're dehydrated in the ER, and that's going to speed up that recovery. But it's still, it's not perfect. It's not 100%, and I think that's part of the reason why he gassed out later on in the competition, aside from, obviously, we'll talk about training and sports specificity in a bit, and that literally, he was just, he just didn't have the glycogen load that he had before, and it turns out epinephrine, having those type of hardcore fight-or-flight responses that you're going to have under that type of pressure, that just causes your body to burn through that glycogen even faster, and once it's gone, you're not going to be able to replenish it when you're doing something like boxing. Because Lord knows you don't want to drink too much, take a shot in the gut, and then vomit all over the floor. And 
and that's just another stressor. You know, these guys weren't exactly taking it easy. They were going all over the place. They were promoting the fight. You know, they were, I mean, obviously McGregor was is quite the showman, but, you know, you could only burn it that hard for that long. I mean, Floyd looked calm, looked collected. He's like, all right, you know, put his little, did his little pose down and, you know, stood on there where McGregor was still up there screaming and yelling. And it's, okay, fair enough. I mean, stick to your shtick if that's what you want. But I feel that's part of the physiology that was working against him. I'll definitely put him in the 160s. Like, he was definitely up... Well, I, I mean, just the sheer reality. Even if he was only up in the 160s, that is literally a gallon of fluid that he pulled off himself. And in 24 hours, plus you're in Vegas, plus you've got all the spotlight on you, plus you have all this attention, like, it's not like you just go into a cave and sleep for 24 hours and you're good to go. Like, he was obviously still on stage doing the media stuff afterwards and otherwise. Like, I just think their stressor management could have been a lot better. Yeah, well, Floyd did that before. So, mm -hmm. Floyd knows exactly what to expect. You know, he's, a, he's naturally a welterweight. He fights at 127. For most of his fights, he's fought three fights heavier than 127, but he never weighed in above about 150. He was 149.5 or something like that in the weigh in. So, he was, he was comfortable. Mm hmm. So, what did you think, in general, about the tactics of the fight? I thought it was smart uh, on Floyd's part. When I started watching the fight, because I haven't seen, you know, Floyd hasn't fought in two years. A lot can change in two years. He's very, he, 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 he's just a, he's a really good shooter, naturally. Uh, you can tell that he took the fight seriously. It looked like he put on a little bit of muscle um, coming up to the fight. But in terms of the strategy of the fight, I thought it was smart. I thought it was very meticulous. He never looked like he was going to hurt me. At any point in that fight, he never looked like he was going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. He was real slow in the opening rounds. Pretty much gave them to Connor. Uh, I've been watching the Floyd fight for a long time. He typically will have a little bit of a slow start. I mean, he's, he's got a good high boxing IQ, so he wants to see what the opponent does. And then whenever he sees what the opponent does, it takes him usually a couple rounds. Uh, he'll start to kind of collect that data mm -hmm. and recognize those patterns. And he's been doing it so long at such a high level that once he has your pattern, he's got you. You know, I will say this. Connor was lucky in it. Um, this one fought a lot of big Las Vegas fighters. But he was on court. He was switching. And early on, he was switching very fluidly. So Connor would, would go from unorthodox hits to a right hand and fight your stance. So they had punches. He had a reach advantage. He obviously had a reach advantage. It made it a little bit harder for Floyd to get jabbed off early. Uh, but I felt like once he figured him out, he realized he wasn't going to get hurt. And that, that happened somewhere around the third, maybe the fourth round. He realized he wasn't going to get hurt by him. And mm -hmm. then you'll, you'll notice that people down the stretch started doing something they don't usually do. He, he just started walking Connor down. Mm -hmm. He started Mm 
Mm -hmm. No, I think it was genius in the effect that he was metabolic taxing, but I think at the same time, you know, coming back to the whole specificity, how many times did you see Connor just naturally step in and grab him around the waist from behind? I mean, that, when you talk about grappling, like, he just kept setting up like he was going to throw him, which, to be honest, I kind of wanted to see. But I think therein lies the entire crux of our argument, is just look at how much more Connor is adapted to being a grappler with a different pacing strategy, you know, where you were brilliant in your comments about, you know, how long does a boxing match go as far as cumulative minutes being out in there fighting another person compared to cumulative minutes whenever you're doing mixed martial arts. And you could obviously see the metabolic cost differences. And even with the lighter gloves, that's still that amount of time keeping his hands up. So, yeah, come minute 25, 26, 27, a.k.a. we're getting into that ninth and tenth round, you see how he's just having a hard time keeping his hands up, keeping his head moving. Like, he was just gassed out. And... Mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And Kurt Floyd, um, not a legal punch, the referee was really generous with the counter. Counter fouled many times. Oh. The hitting on the back of the head and everything? I mean, it was... Yeah. See, otherwise, Connor probably oh, <laughs> Floyd, a number of millions of dollars. not, yeah, as explosive as he once was, but he's still pretty damn fast when he wants to be. definitely taking his time. And at the same time, let's be honest, I, I understand the basic argument of the sheer accumulation of they obviously made contact, but there's obviously a huge difference between glancing blows, because Floyd wasn't stepping into any of those punches. You know, he was letting them brush off him. And, you know, one hard hit right on the button, and then that's the end of the fight. You know, Connor landed punches, but it doesn't, I mean, if you look at Floyd's face afterwards and everything else, he doesn't look beaten down, you know, it doesn't look like he did any legitimate damage to him. Yeah. 
O'Connor. I mean, he was at the point in the, in the tenth round, really in the ninth round, but definitely in the tenth, where he was completely out of gas. He had he couldn't lift his hand. Mm-hmm. His mouth was wide open. You know, he couldn't breathe. He could barely keep his eyes open. He was a he was a wreck. You know, he was definitely. Uh, I know that Connor has a fight that you know. I wish he would let it go longer. I wish he would let me, you know, go down like like a warrior and stuff like that. I don't really necessarily think he keeps the warrior to get knocked down, but yeah. But that that's what Connor wanted. Um, listen, there is there was still about two minutes left in that tenth round. If that thing would have, if the referee would have let that go on, Connor would have been fucked up. Yeah. No, that would have been. Oh, you want to talk about the, I mean, let's not go NFL and CTE here, but at the end of the reality of it, yeah, you can have your pride, have your ego. You know, he definitely never quit, but what's the point of just doing that much more damage to your brain when it's a foregone conclusion? Like, all you're doing is going down. No one thought, like, oh, maybe, you know, he's going to throw a last second uppercut and actually knock out Floyd. Like, all we're watching is, yeah. If, if we wanted to watch human beings get mauled, we would have, you know, average Joe's box Mike Tyson today. You know, if we just want to watch people get their brains bashed in. But, right. and, yeah, I mean, and if, Lord knows, if he doesn't think he's a tough enough guy already, I don't know what's going to, you know, <laughs> what's going to make him feel like he is. Because at the end of the day, obviously, he put on a good fight. Obviously, he took it seriously. Just, you know, at the end of the day, Floyd simply had... Not just so much more skill, but gosh, the tactics that Floyd had. Just yeah, let him come to him. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're right. Just, he let him come to him, let Connor essentially wear himself out once he realized that, you know, there was not a real risk of Connor knocking him out with his ability to obviously have a great defense. And at the same time, I mean, you just look at a lot of those punches that Connor was landing or what you would might quote-unquote call punches, like, his hands aren't moving fast, you know? That's why he's just he keep using his reach, keeping his distance. Like, you know, Connor actually tried to play, what would you say, a little bit more of a conservative game compared to what most people would have expected, but it's still the equivalent of a novice playing a master in chess, and you're going to lose to that master irregardless of your tactics. Or at least not enough of consequence, yeah. But at the same, no. At the same time, you figure the judges, they don't have the advantages we do when you come to watching it. They're from a fixed perspective. You know, they're not. They're not. Their view is not optimized for our viewing information. You know, they've got to just judge it off of where they see things and how they are seeing it unfold from that perspective. And you know, at the same time, the judges so bias, and at the same. And they're probably basing it off of the sheer fact of what they saw, which is, yeah, Connor's landing punches, but none of them are doing damage. And the few hits that Floyd's having, like, oh, he, like, he's hitting him. He's just not trying to unload. He's trying to bide his time and wait till he can essentially be about as fresh as you can be in the ninth and tenth round, or sorry, eighth, ninth and tenth round, and just put him down. Mm-hmm. So, Floyd knew exactly what he was doing and exactly when he was going to do it. It's, just, it's very smart. He, you know, the day of the fight, Floyd went and placed a bet on himself. Yeah. Um, the over-under, which he didn't end up actually getting to do, he, he went to bet on himself and something happened. He was going to bet $400,000 on himself or something like that. Um, he doesn't usually bet on himself for fights, but this time he was going to because he was so certain. And something happened, they wouldn't let Floyd back, so Floyd gave the money to a friend, let the friend place the bet, and for whatever reason, they wouldn't let the friend place the bet because how close it was to the fight, and so they ended up 
Say what you will about his uh, financial decisions and obviously some of the general life conduct, but when it comes to boxing, he's incredibly good. <laughs> That's where I just get a huge kick out about the, what would you say, I wouldn't say, just biases, really. You can say confirmation bias, you know, where it just, oh man, all these MMA guys, are the best, you know, they can take any of these guys, they're far greater athletes, blah, blah, blah. It's like, don't get me wrong, in the sport of MMA, that's absolutely correct. But at the end of the day, it comes down to specificity. I just, God, watching it, just the reality of how many times you could kind of see, I wouldn't say it wasn't this massive conflict, but you, you could definitely see moments where Connor was like looking more like he wanted to shoot in than punch. You know? He definitely, he didn't look like he was about to kick Floyd by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a number of those times where it looked like he was getting to try and, you know, throw him, you know, to grapple. And it's just, I mean, that's the thing, is the guy has an incredible skill set. It's just yeah. Floyd's skill set is simply being on two feet and only hitting with the hands, specifically the front of them. You know, sorry, your knuckles. Like you just you're going up against someone that's a master of their craft. Like you're just it'd be the equivalent of you know someone talking about how uh, oh man this this artist is going to be able to be better than this guy at a piano. And he plays the guitar, he plays the bass, he plays the flute, he plays the saxophone, and he played piano when he was younger. But no one would ever think that person could go out and, you know, beat, essentially, someone that would be a master piano concert player. But yet, that's the argument folks are going to have for this type of sport, which, it's absurd. So. Hmm. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, he's super well rounded. You know, I mean, he's, he's got some serious skills. He's chiseled. He's a really good athlete. I just, Floyd, Floyd the boxer, that he always has this thing. And that shows. Oh, and, you know, at the same, and the same previous statements you made about the sheer age thing. Of uh, Floyd, you know, he's, he's getting long in the tooth. You know, the, he's. Right. 
and talk about another brilliant strategy for a final fight to do to make a stupid amount of money with. Yeah, don't go... Woo. Yeah, and Connor's upset that they didn't videotape him getting a essentially a full blown concussion. Like, really, dude? I'm mean, actually you saw his head get snapped back. I think it was probably when Floyd really started to open up. I think it probably was in the eighth round, where I mean Connor took a couple dazed steps where it's like, okay, he just got lit up there. And and still, man, that's impressive. So what's the next big fight on the on the docket for you, bud? Well, there, you know, there's a fight um, next week, Triple G and Canelo. I mean, me personally, I was just going to go, you know, have my own personal fight with a bag of M&Ms and type 2 diabetes. But, no, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah, good luck down there, bud. Yeah, do you, this this could be kind of a weird, you know, recording your last words. Is there anything else you want to throw out there? <laughs> okay. You know, it's uh, Saturday afternoon. It's still pretty cold here. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to pick up a little bit. Well. I'm not that concerned. Good luck down there, and you know, you're always welcome to come up north. 